So, if I'm gonna try to sell you a rock, regular looking rock, normal, but I tell you it's magic, you're not gonna just take my word for it, right? I need to show you something odd or something that would make you think maybe there's something interesting here. Right. Now, what about if I had a marble? And I said, I wanna sell you that, and it's magic, but I'll show you this time it's magic, I'll show you. I'll show you that it's red, it's the color red. And then I tell you, the reason it's magic is because normally it's blue and it has changed today, it's red. Now you're gonna buy the marble? No, you're still taking my word for it, right? I showed you something I said was magic, but then I told you what it normally was. See, in both of those cases, you're using something called law of observation to protect yourself. Okay, it forces somebody making a claim to show you both sides, to demonstrate both sides to you for direct comparison so you can decide if there's something there worth paying attention to, something interesting. This law says, you can't recognize something as odd or special or distinct until you first recognize what's normal or regular, what should be there, all right? Like I said, this protects us from bogus claims, forces both sides to be demonstrated. Now, magicians will use this, they'll take advantage of this law. Try to saw, saw the assistant in half. Table's too thin for the assistant's legs to be hidden. So how's the trick work? Well, no, the table is thick. It's just colored in a way that it blends in with the background. When they leave a thin strip of trim that stands out, makes you think the table is thin. You're messing around with that background and foreground with what's normal and what's odd, what we should pay attention to and what we shouldn't pay attention to. You're messing around with that law of observation. That's all manipulation, all manipulation it's just a form of messing with the law of observation. See, someone is either trying to take behavior that's odd and mesh it with what's normal so you won't pay attention to it, so you won't go do something about it. Or they're taking behavior that's normal and they're stretching it out to be odd or to appear odd so you'll pay attention to it so you will go do something. So the better you are at understanding the law of observation, the better you'll be at recognizing when this is happening. So as far as physics goes, physicists use the law of observation all the time. See, physicists say that the universe is made up of something called energy. This energy exists everywhere and it's found in different forms. Light, heat, electricity. These are different forms of energy. Now when physicists Think they might have found a new form of energy, they first need to satisfy the law of observation. This will confirm that what they have found really is new and they're not just getting tripped up by something they've seen before. This will confirm to everyone that this new form of energy really is worth studying. It's really something real. So how do they do that? They take all the forms of energy that they know and understand and are familiar with and they demonstrate those as the normal part of the law, the regular, the background, what we're familiar with. And then they take this new form of energy and they demonstrate how oddly it behaves compared to what's normal, to what's regular. This confirms to everyone that what they have found really is a new form of energy and now they can begin studying it. Now they can figure out what it is, how to use it, all that stuff. Okay. But what happens if you believe that you have found all forms of energy and you want to study them together? You don't just want to study one at a time. Well, before we study anything, we first need to satisfy the law of observation. Otherwise, there may not be anything real to study. So how do we do that? Well, we take all the forms of energy we want to study. We put them over here, the odd side of the law. Remember, law of observation says whatever we're studying goes on the odd side, the odd behavior side. And we have all energy over there because that's what we want to study, all energy. Well, if that's the case, then what's left to put on the normal side? 
the, the one we're supposed to demonstrate is background, familiar, where we start, what we know. What do we put there? All energy is on the odd side. So what do we put on the normal side? Well, the only thing that's left is no energy at all. So to be able to study all forms of energy, and that has a specific name, that's called studying the complete laws of physics. And that's a holy grail thing right now for physicists around the world. So to study all energy together, all of it, put over on the odd side, to be able to do that, we have to demonstrate, not talk about, not put it on the whiteboard. We have to demonstrate a place with no energy. Demonstrate. But that's not possible, is it? Why? Because energy is defined as existing everywhere. We just said that. If energy exists everywhere, then how can I go find a place with no energy? It's everywhere, always. Therefore, the law of observation cannot be satisfied. We cannot study all forms of energy together. We cannot study the complete laws of physics. It's not possible. And I don't mean it's not possible to complete them. I mean it's not possible to even try. So if that's what you claim to do every day for your job, go in and you're going to complete the laws of physics, well, I'll be real interested to find out what you actually do every day. See, but that's not the problem. Energy can exist everywhere. That's fine. Energy can be defined as energy. And that doesn't matter. Just because energy is self-referential and the laws of physics ultimately must be self-referential, that's not the problem. What is the problem? See, I don't care how many IQ tests you've taken. I don't care... Who you surround yourself that tells you you're a genius every day. I don't care how many things you shot into space and then caught it again. Do you know the answer to this question? What is the real problem with self-referential laws? Obviously, they still work. We still have everything. So what's the problem? If you and I are fighting, and it's because I pushed you, because you pushed me, because I pushed you, because you pushed me. That description of the fight is self-referential. Referring to you, you're referring back to me. We're still fighting. We're still moving. We're still punching. Energy is still being transferred. But the description of that is self-referential, which means what? You don't know who caused the fight. A self-referential description of what's happening means you no longer get to use it to determine cause. And you never did. Self-referential laws mean you don't get to say what cause is anything anymore. That's the real problem with self-referential laws. Is that now that you've seen this explanation, and this has no holes, this has no debatable points, you can try. There are none. Now that you know laws of physics are self-referential, you now know cause and effect are nothing but an illusion. And they always have been. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. I want you to see both sides, demonstrate both sides. If this is true, if cause and effect are actually an illusion, then that means for any event in the universe, there will be two equally likely but equally opposite causes. Which means there should exist two separate sets of laws of physics. And indeed, there, there are. Standard model has been very confused. There are actually two sets of laws of physics in there. So here's how you see it. You model the universe as four physical dimensions. Get rid of time, that's just a perception anyway. Four physical dimensions correspond to light, electricity, magnetism, and gravity. Yes, we will combine them, but I don't want you to just take my word for it. Start here and see it yourself. You take those four forces, dimensions, whatever you're going to call them. Now we're going to split them up into two sets based on behavior. We're going to put the photon, the electron, the proton, and the graviton here. We're going to put light waves, voltage waves, matter waves, and gravity waves here. 
and we're going to call them the laws of particles and the laws of waves, the laws of position, the laws of motion, where you are and how fast you are going. And you will not be able to see them at the same time. They will reference each other, so they'll always satisfy the law of observation. The only thing you have to give up is your idea of causation. Two sets of cause and two sets of law. Now there is more to talk about. Earth's magnetic field might not even be here much longer. But before we do, there's one thing that I know I'll never figure out. I don't know if anybody else ever will either. How a YouTube video of a guy pacing back and forth in his living room won all the Nobel Prizes and changed the course of history. That one, I know, I'll never.